بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سائل يسأل فيقول أفتونا في حكم من صلى وهو يحمل صورا فوتوغرافية هل صلاته صحيحة أم لا Question comes with regards to carrying a photograph or an image and making salat. You're carrying in a photograph or an image, you have a picture with you, is your prayer valid or not? Is your salat valid or not? Al Jawabu I'lam Anna man sallahu yahmilu suwaran photographiatan for salatu hu sahiatun ma dama wahi mahmula wa laysat ama mahu wa man da'a al khilafa fa alayhi bid dalil and so it says that whoever is carrying an image or a photograph then his prayer is valid it's valid prayer as long as that those pictures or those images are being carried and they're not in front of you they're not sitting in front of you any scholar or any mufti or anyone who says other than this that the prayer is invalid must provide the proof and the evidence this fatwa was given by Sheikh Muhammad ibn Ismail al-Imrani rahimahullah ta'ala the Qadi of Yemen and his time may Allah have mercy on his soul and we just want to analyze and break down a few points with regards to the question and with regards to the answer. First and foremost is the question, Allah Alam, when the question was asked, but for sure it wasn't asked in 2019, whereas the author died before then. And it's a big possibility, and Allah knows best, that the question was older. Could be early 2000s. Could be late 90s, early 90s, 80s, 70s. Allahu Alam, the date of that question. But well, the point I'm trying to get to is compare that to now. That to this, then to now. If it was a problem and an issue of people having photographs with them and pictures of living things with them 10 years ago, 5 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, Allah Alam, how many years ago, in another country, then of course the need... Is going to be even more in our time and our location in the United States in 2019, in which there is more money, in which there is more technology, in which there is less Islam and less Muslims, more kufr and more kufar, and 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 and. So if it was a question they had to ask then and there, of course it's going to be something that we're going to need now and here. And we understand the equation. That's first and foremost, and this helps you as a layman Muslim to understand fatwa more. Have a better grasp of the concept of a fatwa Of a time, of a place, a need, a culture, and a race This question is a cultural issue It doesn't happen with another race or another culture And this question is general for all races and all cultures This question is specific for a place, specific for a time And this is general or not only general But something could be even more needed In your time and your place If these people have an issue Then my people have that issue, what? Ten times more than that So I need to pay attention more Number two, there's no question which is a stupid or dumb or bad question. And it's best for you to expose yourself as being ignorant or to look simplistic or to look lightheaded instead of you worshiping Allah incorrectly. For me to know that my prayer is correct and inshallah, hopefully it's accepted, it's better than you saying, oh, that's a stupid question or that's a dumb question. And this is manifested in the social media world with regards to the YouTube comments. Many videos, you go on, the first thing you do is you read the comments. Before you get into the video, you read the comments. You look at the comments. There's no doubt about that. And anyone who's saying that, Allah, I don't think telling the truth. Everyone likes to read the comments and see what the people say. And you find people arguing and fighting. And oftentimes on Islamic videos and question and answers, you find people commenting. Oh, what's, what a dumb question. That's a stupid question. You don't have to ask that question. Oh, you don't need no shake to tell you this. Common sense is that. Common sense is that. So on and so forth. And this, this is a very negative mindset. It may be stupid to you. It may be easy to you. But to the next person, it may be very difficult. It may be a life-changing answer to him. So never scorn anyone and look at someone as being simple-minded with regards to how you live and what you know. Hmm. That's a very important concept here. You may think, big deal, I have to carry my money in my wallet. What's the big problem? But to the next person, he may feel that that's what? That's a major issue. Number three, in most cases, a question proves sincerity. If a person who wants to know and he's asking to find out it's proven that he's concerned. And a person who's concerned is a sign that they are a believer. A sign. 
Whereas the munafiq doesn't care. He doesn't give much concern. It doesn't bother him. And the person who is afraid and scared and concerned is going to ask the question. Also, we have to understand the concept that uh, certain things are ancient. Certain things have been around for a very long time. And there are certain things that remain like that. But there are things which are new. And there are things which the concept isn't new, but the vessel and the means of that thing being transited and moved is new. So people have been illustrating for how long? What do explore, uh, scientists say and archaeologists say? Those who believe in evolution and Darwin's theory. They say this proves that man evolved. The sculptures, the paintings, the illustrations on the wall, on the cave wall. And this is proof that they were in touch with their environment and their surroundings. They had fears, they had hopes, and they drew horses, they had battles. They made these things on the walls of caves. And this goes to show you the intelligence of man at that time versus him later on. So the concept of drawing something and illustrating something is very, 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 very old. And the concept of someone making a picture of a thing is also very old. But not like how things are today. Once you have a cell phone which literally can hold a thousand pictures. You have a cell phone that can hold a thousand videos. HD, 4K quality in your pocket. It's not the same as someone sculpting something, painting something, having it on a plaque or a piece of parchment or leather or a stone. You can't carry it with you. So oftentimes the images and the idols and the things that people had back in the day was cumbersome. You couldn't just have it in your pocket. You had to put it in front of you on the side. But nowadays those things are what? Right in your pocket, your top pocket. Rather you have three or <coughs> four different devices on you. You're getting, you're getting notifications in the prayer as you pray with an image. Okay? Or those brothers who put their phones in front of them. Many brothers do this. A lot of brothers, they do it. Whether you're wearing pants or a thobe, or whether you're wearing an izar or a lungi, or whatever you want to call it, they put their keys in, a, in their pocket, in their thobe, what? Right in front of them. So what's the ruling on that? You have an image right in front of you. Or in your pocket. Whether the image is halal or what? Or haram. The last point that pertains to this question is, this, this, this su'al, this question, is how one issue pertains to another issue. So in Islam, we have the issue of the conditions of the prayer. And we have the issue of the things which inhibit the prayer from being valid. And then we have the issue of taswir, photographs, sculpting, imaging. Is it permissible to take a picture? Can you take a video? Can you be on a video? Can you draw something? Can you illustrate something? 3D animation, right? Toy Story. What part is it on? Four, three? Is that the same? Yeah, these things, these are issues. So we have two different rulings. One is the prayer being valid, and the second is the concept of having a photograph or an image or a video, etc. And now we have a combination of both. And that's because people pray wearing clothes, and in people's clothes there are things. In your wallet, in your phone, and the list goes on. A locket. So many different ways that this can be what? Manifested. Polo, Ralph Lauren, horses on your feet. Huh? T-Rex. <laughs> Sanitation department. You have a snake on your hat. Huh? This is a reality. Everyone see the point? It's not a far-fetched issue. It's not something that's in outer space. It's actually, the issue is what? Extremely practical. Extremely practical and it's important for everyone to know. Are we understanding this? Those are points of reflection on the question. As far as points of, points of reflection on the answer, then the first point of reflection is how simple and brief the answer is. It's not a long paragraph. It's not an essay. Simple two sentences. Secondly, the mufti here did not scorn the questioner. He didn't say that's a dumb question. He didn't say that's common sense, but he answered the question. Thirdly, is that the mufti repeated the question and he gave a simple answer. He said that the prayer is valid. And why is it valid? Because that's the default. And if you prayed correctly, the prayer is correct. Unless it's proven what? Otherwise. And most importantly, other than that, it has to be proven. And we have different fiqh details, different madhabs, different opinions, different fatwas that aren't based off of the direct proof. It could be right, it could be wrong. But if they're not based off of the direct proof, then you can't force the other people to take them. And we're not saying it. So you may find a mufti says that the prayer is invalid because kada, 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 kada. He has to have dalil. Whether it's direct or indirect delay, but it has to be based off of what? Something, some type of evidence that's, that's, that's strong. And it can't be something which is what? Which is weak. Also, the wisdom of the ruling with regards to a person praying in front of an image could be a means of, in Allah, imitating shirk. 
It was if you're worshiping this this picture or this image, mm. rather, or with with regards to it being in your what pocket. It's a huge difference. You praying towards something, mm-hmm. and this is why some of the people of knowledge disliked praying towards a fire, even if it's cold outside. Mm. They disliked praying towards fire because it's a means of imitating fire worshippers. Okay, and the same applies to a heater. Some ulama say, and others they differ. The point is, it's some type of heat that you're praying towards, or anything that's in front of you in your qibla. Shouldn't, shouldn't, shouldn't be like that. And it's one of the reasons why some of the ulama of Islam said that the sutra should be on the right side or the left side and never directly in front of you. That's not, that's not necessarily correct. We're not here to discuss that. What we're trying to make a point is that they disliked for you to be standing directly in front of something, imitating the worship of other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Last but not least is the issue that the ulama of Islam they call ma ta'ummu bihil balwa. A widespread problem or epidemic. And that is money. Everyone needs money. And most currents or most, most the, the majority of the currency today has what on it? Pictures. It has an image. Mm-hmm. So how am I going to get on a bus, travel, even in Yemen? Huh? Mm-hmm. You get on a mm-hmm. bus, you want to go somewhere to this camp, you have to what? I have money. You have to pay money on that. Money is a what? Mm-hmm. A picture. It's an image. And you can't cross out the face of the image and still use that currency. <laughs> whether you like it or not. So the point that I'm trying to make is that this is something which is widespread and everyone is going to be affected and touched by it on one level or another. Let alone in America 2019 which you have cell phones and children have diapers and socks and this and this and brand names and the list goes on. So these issues are important to know and to take the East and merge it with the West. To take the old and merge it with the what? With the new. The Islamic spirit with the modern technology and understand it in that proper light. Huh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala surely knows best.